Hello and welcome back to Shakhtar to Glory episode 56 and it's the first episode of this new fourth season. Um, obviously last season we went out at the, I think it was semi-final stage, Atletico Madrid. Uh, went out of a bit of a whimper really, um, thought it'd be a bit closer. We, I think we gave him a good account in one of the legs but it wasn't enough and wasn't to be. So we're here again. We are going to jump in with the um, the charity shield, community shield, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I was going to skip this and go straight to the Champions League games and the draw. But I thought, you know what, we'll we'll do this. And I'll, depending on the timing of it, I may chuck the draw on the end. If not, I'll do a league game around it or something around it. Uh, so today we've got Dinamo Kiev in that. Um, I think we touched upon it on the last episode or one of the last couple. They did sack their manager and they brought in Pellegrini. We did give him a bit of a welcome to the league with a, I think it was a 4-0 or a 5-1, something like that. Um quite a heavy heavy loss for him but he would have had a chance to um you know regroup do some transfers of his own get his own stamp on the team i imagine we'll take a look at that in a bit um but obviously we've done some changes as well um i mentioned it on the episodes i do want to have a bit of a strengthening period we'll see you know who can come into the team i'm not completely done yet um possible transfers or just possibly who we've brought up from the other teams i brought up a lot of players i think it was the last episode uh, which was a bit of a review episode uh we brought up quite a few we said we'd have, we'd have a look at them uh we've done a bit of that we've done a bit of pre-season as that went gradually we got a few loan deals in and we you know sent some of those guys out on loan again just sort of to oversee their progress and see you know see if they're really ready to, to make the jump into the first team so what we'll do we'll have a quick jump into transfers there's only been a couple so i will just jump straight into it so you can see them um because it's not much of a surprise well one of them isn't certainly isn't much of a surprise but there, there's not a huge amount of um, business happened so the ins i think a couple of these are actually um previous ones that have just sort of gone through so we'll go through those um yero vente uh portuguese a colombian guy uh, midfield center he's down in our under 21s at the moment 18 years old he's got a look about him yeah he he looks uh he looks a bit of a prospect if we can get him boosted up in a few of the areas and a few of the positions uh there's a few there i do want to look at i am looking at a bit of a mix up in the tactics as well uh, probably keeping with the free up front for the league because it just helps us rotate a lot of players, um, keep a lot fresh. Um, but for the Champions League games, it's done okay. It's got us to the semi-finals, but we perhaps need to be looking at a way that's going to take us to the next stage. He comes from Deportivo Cali, as does Julian Podomo, uh, a striker this time. Finishing only of 10, but he's got a lot of other attributes there that I like. He's he's six foot, he is a target man. I think we are looking at retraining him. He has been offered for loan, but he hasn't gone anywhere yet. Uh, next one is Javier Atello. Uh, he's a young centre back. He's still in the first team. He's played a he's played a friendly, but he's still floating around the team because he's twenty years old. Doesn't qualify as a young player that can sort of jump straight in, but he is around the first team at the moment. At the next is George Suazo, also from Colo Colo. As you can see, I've raided a lot of the same sort of clubs. Uh, a 19-year-old striker. He's got a lot more about him currently, I'd say. A lot more stats that I'm liking the look of. First touch, 17. He's finishing at 13, isn't so bad. Pace isn't so bad. Um, his heading's okay. Six foot one. Uh, he's a complete forward. He can play um, the poacher role, which I obviously play in my three up front. Uh, he's got three goals in, well, two and three games off the bench um, in the preseason, which has gone pretty well. We'll have a look at that in a minute as well. Uh, we had to welcome him back to the club. I don't know why. He's only been gone a year or two. But Victor Kovalenko, uh, he is probably, he can play in that centre midfield spot, which is where he was playing when we bought it, when we sold him, rather. Uh, he's probably not kicked on as much as he should have done, uh, which is a bit of a shame. If he'd have stayed with us, I think he'd been a better player now. He's only three-star current ability. He has got four-star potential, but at 24, I don't really see that moving up that much. Um, um, so he'll be quite good, maybe as a replacement for Fred. Uh, if that sort of goes through, there's a bit of interest in him again. I think from Napoli again. Uh, it, it has faded again. I think I think they come in, we sort of rebuffed them, and I think they've kind of just disappeared off the scene a little bit. But yeah, we welcome Kovalenko back. Obviously, we sold him, I think, for like 30-odd million. 
35 million. Didn't really have much of an impact at Man City. He came up transfer listed, 10, 10 odd million. Why not? He's a homegrown player. Especially if we do sell one of those defenders who I mentioned. I think one of them at least is, is a Shakhtar trained player. So we needed a bit more of that in there. But yeah, we welcome him back. And the final one, if anyone knows, has watched any of my previous saves or did, if there's any randomers out there who read my blog at the time, um, Kuma Babakar. Uh, this goes back, this is a bit of a man crush, bromance, whatever you want to call it. This is a guy I signed um, out of nowhere. I'd never heard of him. FM11, I think it was. Um, I was Aston Villa in my first season. We finished second in the league. I mean, I don't know how. We had very little money and just a couple of good signings. And then I got offered the Real Madrid job. And I was at that job for probably gone 20 years. I think I stayed there to unlock that achievement for 20 years. I wanted to branch out a little bit, but I wanted that 20-year achievement. And we did. And he was there for a bulk of it. And he just broke record after record. He was in like 30 plus, 40 plus goals every season. Like he was outscoring Ronaldo in the early years. I think we had Di Maria there. That Some of those Real Madrid players I had that team, that's probably the best team I've probably ever had and it didn't wasn't just one team it, it it improved and changed and evolved over 20 years I mean as you can imagine a lot of regens come in a lot of older players sort of switched around and it was just a remarkable sort of season I did move on to Bayern Munich Atletico Madrid and I think it finished at Arsenal I've still got the save somewhere so I may boot it up one day and just go back and have a look at it and I'll show you Babacar perhaps but he was absolutely phenom phenomenal um, I have signed him on this game off lot on an offline save I play. He isn't quite as good as, as he was on that game. He's obviously a bit older now. But 27 years old, um, I just like him. I, I had the opportunity to bring him in. I tried bringing him in last year. Uh, he was transfer listed, but he didn't want to move to, to Shakhtar. I didn't want to move to Ukraine. We went to a few games. We praised him. Every time we took praise with the press, we had players praising him. All this, that and the other. And eventually this year, transfer came up. Someone else went for him. I think it was Inter Milan. Um, and doesn't show because he's not they're not interested anymore um, and we got there first we got there we, we got there to the punch he's had a bit of an indifferent couple of years he left Fiorentina for 12 million to go to Napoli uh, didn't really have much of a good time there he did okay in that Fiorentina season 14 and 37 not the best average rating ironically had better average ratings at Napoli but just didn't score the goals but I think if we give him a a platform to perform and certainly in the league um, I think we'll um, I certainly think we'll be able to get something out of him and certainly get the double digits I'd say in goal. I'll come on to this, the outs now. Um, a lot of loans uh, he a few frees as well, a few contract expiries that sort of thing. Uh, Ischenko also finally retired which is another reason we've got a few of the centre backs still hanging around, not too sure where we're going with that yet. We've got Lazarev that's gone out on loan to Zerka, the young goalkeeper He's coming on quite nicely, uh, so we'll see how he gets on. Uh, the right back, Yao Yao, the Ivorian, who seems to be getting paler and paler every time I click on him. His stats haven't really gone as I would hope. Uh, he had a decent season last year, but hasn't really kicked on. A lot got a lot of players from ASEC. I need to go and have a look at them again, actually. Soon that reminds me. Uh, Adil, was it Mergi? Misery. Uh, he's coming on quite nicely. 20 years old now. Uh, we've loaned him out to um, Alexandria. Uh, if we can get a bit of game time out of him, he's already got three caps for Tunisia. He's he's a player I'm quite excited about. His stats and stars don't necessarily do him justice, but I think he's a good player. Um, a few other loans who stands out: Stephen Gray, that young goalkeeper we found, just randomly floating around on a free. He's gone out to get some football. He does need a bit of a stat boost in a lot of positions, um, but he can. I'm confident he can he can do something there. Uh, Kolod, the young uh, Shakhtar prospe uh, prospect, whatever you want to call it, um, academy graduate. He's gone to, is it Zerka again? Zerka again, he was there last year. He got 11 goals in 25 games, so not too bad. So if we can get an improvement on that this season, we can look at phasing him into the team next season. Uh, Sego is one I was certainly looking at keeping around the first team, but as soon as Babacar come in, like this guy was going to replace, Sego was going to replace the guy I sold who we're coming to and you've probably seen already um, but once we managed to get Babacar he was the obvious one so we'll give him another season on loan somewhere uh, and see how he gets. Conop um you've probably seen that I'm just not interested in this guy anymore he's 30 years old now he just 
was never delivering for us. He'll probably go on to Celtic now, and we'll probably get him in the groups, and he'll just destroy us. He'll do. He'll, he'll have an amazing season probably, but we just could never get the best out of him. He, we we didn't. Uh, we made a big loss on this guy. Um, we paid 20 million for him two years ago, or like a year and a half ago, something like that. Celtic coming for 5.5, non-negotiable. No one else is interested. His big wage was on like nearly 100 grand a week. He had to go, so he, off he went. And the final one is Roman Juremchuk. Now. A bid from Arsenal came out of nowhere, um, and it turns out it's because Giroud was retiring, or on the verge of retiring, so off he went. Uh, we negotiated, I think, a pretty good deal for him in the end. We paid 10.5, just under 10.5. He had a good season last season. That that nearly threw me off playing him, but then I went back and thought, Do you know what, that was in the league. Most of my players will have good seasons in the league and hit 18 goals in 20 games. In the Champions League, he probably wasn't quite up to it when we needed him. Uh, the year before, obviously, he, he, I think it was the year before, he pretty much led us to the quarters or the semis. Yeah, the semis. He pretty much le led us there himself. So we're going to go with... We've got a lot of players on international duty. Um, they're still at the World Cup, I think, or, or certainly on holiday from the World Cup. A hell of a lot of our team um, are either, yeah, injured, picked up a few injuries, or we've got international duty. Kovalenko's still there. Um, and obviously, you can see here a few loans. We've got a lot of players in our first team squads in and around the first team squad at the moment we're going to get like a few of those out on loan and um, bring this down a little bit because it's a, just a little bit crazy we may keep them up there just to keep them in mind for next season and just sort of look at the progress uh, next season but we go with Shevchenko in goal Rakitsky Tello jumps into centre back young Chilean guy is he the one we signed from Cola Cola he is uh, Kvitsov and we've got Leo and Butko no change there we've got Fred we've got Hurtado in the box to box role uh, he is young Colombian. Was he one we looked at? No, he was on loan last season. Ten games, did okay. Uh, we've given him a bit of a go this game. It's the Community Shield. If we, you know, it's not a huge deal for me. We, um, not too worried. But we've gone got Rodrigo playing up front, Baracchia and Marino. He's a new um, striker from Argentina. He's done pretty well uh, in pre-season. He is offered on loan. Udinese have come in for him interesting he actually went there last year okay that's him didn't do great so we may look at that he's only 19 if we can get him over there for some goals uh, some games that'd be awesome uh, on the bench who's new we've got Goran Matasan has stepped up young Croatian centre midfielder uh, he was on capacity last year did okay but, we, but again a few of these are still out on loan um, options so we'll see how they get on we've got Kuasi who He's starting to look quite good. He did not great at Lichabets last year. He did well at Stal the year before. He certainly started well at Stal before. Uh, another one from Asek. Uh, Capati wants him again this season, so we, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we've got Yalda Silva. He's the young Portuguese uh, right back who came from our academy, I think. He did. He made a few games last year, did okay. Progressing quite nicely. Uh, but if we can get him again out on loan, we'll be looking at that. Tankowski, still undecided. He doesn't look good enough, especially now we've got Kovalec. Then we've got Anas Farah, 20-year-old um, Norwegian, can play sort of right wing. Probably where we'll be more looking to utilise him. Uh, it was a position I identified uh, as a weakness. We tried to get Malcolm. Uh, we got it to a we got a bit accepted. Uh, we beat a few of the big teams to the punch in that match. In fact, actually, I think PSG was one of them and Barcelona was one of them. Beat them to the punch. They couldn't agree terms on price. We got to negotiate a wage with him and he just didn't want to come uh, he eventually negotiated a deal and went to Barcelona I think uh, we also tried to get Tyson back but he's 32 and they are wanting 16 million for him so no chance with that <laughs> I'm not paying 16 million for him it's not even that much okay and we are in so they're going to play a 4-2-3-1 uh, but we kick off here going left to right in our orange kit our famous orange kit or gold kit I am trying to acquire Dynamo, um, Shakhtar Donetsk kit, actually. Very, very expensive, they seem. Um, new or old. I just want to get one. When I do eventually go to a situation where i am got the cam on, and I just want to have a few shirts sort of in the background. Uh, I've seen a Palace one I could potentially get. Obviously, I did the Palace save at the start of this game. And, yeah, there's a few others I want to get. There's one I've been trying to get since my honeymoon. I, I, I've had the chance to get one there, but... Didn't look legit, so I didn't bother. Now I'm, I can't get hold of anyone here, but I want to get the Maldives football shirt if I can get one. Uh, watched a couple of games 
um, while I was out there. Really enjoyed it. They weren't very good, but uh, we're still coming on here. And Hurtado, and he buries it. New guy, first goal in the derby, first goal in the league, first goal for the team. And yeah, not a bad way to introduce yourself against your most hated rivals. Have a look at that again. But yes, I want to get a few shirts, possibly just having the background, maybe even wear. Um, so we'll, we'll keep, I'll keep trying with that. Um, it's not really a priority in, in the household at the moment either. We've got a few more priorities. And Baratke is injured. It looks like he's gone down with no one around him. So we're going to have to make a change. We'll do it probably after this corner. Or is it going to make us do it before? It looks like the physios have actually carried him off. I can see them walking across the top there. It's going to make me do it before. Okay. We're going to bring Kuasi in. And I think he can go. Yeah, he can go in there. And we'll switch Rodrigo to the left. So, Dan and Kiev giving much better account of themselves in this game than they did, obviously, in that Pellegrini's. And they've scored. Escobar, what a strike that was. Like I was just saying, they're giving a much better account of themselves than they did in that. Um, was it 4 1, 5 1, something like that game at the end of last season? But what a strike. I mean, we shouldn't be conceding there, but bang, first time. I mean, stat, uh, stat wise, we are. We should be running away with this game, really. Start from the back here. Rakitsky into Fred. Back to Rakitsky. Hits it long, but it's intercepted, but Fred picks it back up into Hurtado. Sprays it wide to Marino. Butko into Fred. Kuasi. Out to Leo. First time ball and Marino. And he's there and he buries it. Normality is restored. We are winning again. <laughs> and I always fancy our team to not just score one goal. You know, get a couple of goals. We, Kuasi involved. I want to see him get amongst the goals um, in this game. Leo, first time ball. And great header at the back post, Marino. Okay, we're getting a notification here that Rodrigo's got a slight knock. So we are going to look to bring him off. Um, I probably was looking to take Dan Marino, sorry, Marino off. Sebastian Marino. Not laces out with that finish earlier, but uh, who have we got that can come in? We can probably bring Farrah in. We'll maybe switch him out to a right winger. Play the two through the middle. Uh, we'll maybe drop Butko back a little bit. Bit of an asymmetric kind of shape taking place now. But that's fine. And Hurtado up to Kuasi. Dan Marino. I'm going to call him Dan Marino now. That's just sticking. That's just going to happen. That's just a thing. Leo in and Marino. I'm about to say laces out again. But I think that was a header. Um... I'll probably drop a few Ace Ventura clips <laughs> into here. Uh, um, so, Leo, not Ray Finkel, uh, with the ball. And Marino, it was with his head. <laughs> so, all that is nonsense. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. But that's the end of the game. 3-1. Uh, was it that game where the celebration should be? We've mentioned that before. Not showing it at the moment. Uh, so, you've got the goals. We had Marino with two. Sebastian Marino. Are we going to change his name? Maybe. If he goes out on loan, we won't bother. But if he stays, we might do. And Hurtado had a really good game as well and got a goal. So, yeah, not too too much to see there. So I'm going to play through. The playoff, the draw is out for, on the 7th of August. Yeah, so it'll be the 27th of August is our draw. So we've got a long way to go. So we may well drop in a, a domestic game or two. I might do this one here because this is a newly promoted team. Ingolets Petro, Petrova. Petrova. We'll, Petrova, we'll go with that. Uh, we've got Kiev again coming up. Uh, 27th of August, that's in between these two games here. So we'll maybe do the Inglets game uh, as a live com. Uh, we'll jump back in for what I think will be yeah the Ichevets game. And then we should be able to do the draw on the back of that. And then we are looking at September for, September for the group stage starting. So yeah, I think that's a plan. So... If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. Uh, join the content as well, just in general. Please, you know, sub the channel, uh, you know, to get more of the Shakhtar stuff. Uh, I have got a few more other different things in the fire. I'm planning possibly my next FM save. Uh, I'm not too sure it's going to be 100% yet. I did have an idea. Um, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head now. It was just someone I was following on Twitter. 
did it and it was the um they called it the neil warnock challenge obviously because he's just um got promoted for the record time to the premier league i'd done an intro and it was going to be instead of the Shakhtar, i had it down as like the mick mccarthy steve bruce and there was someone else challenge i, I had a bit of a different name for it than that but the intro featured those predominantly and it was about every year basically just taking charge of a championship team trying to get them promoted once you do that resign drop back down to championship start again and just repeat ad infinitum just keep going for the championship there's not really an end in sight it's just an end when you want to end it really um but yeah he's i was no i wouldn't be starting it now because it's a long-term save and i probably wouldn't have jumped onto it on fm19 i've got an idea for my long-term save on fm19 um when it comes out probably what october november time uh so yeah i'm planning possibly another save after this Shakhtar one depending on how long this takes I mean we're into the fourth season now I think I mentioned it I did have a bit of a five year plan that we intend you know hoping to win the Champions League within five years I thought I'd be able to put enough of a print on the team and enough quality in there to win it in five years um, but we'll see we'll come back for the next episode and uh, yeah we'll, we'll be the Inglets Petrova game I'll see you then take care